unto thee, O Lord. Do I lift up my voice unto thee, O Lord. Do I lift up my voice, O my God. I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed, let not mine enemies triumph over me. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Oh my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed, let not mine enemies triumph over me. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus for a note of victory. Thank you for assurance, the assurance of the believer, how the Lord rolls away that burden, that guilt, that shame. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Sweet Lamb of God. I know my Redeemer lives. That's uh, oh, what Job said in the midst of his trial, in the midst of his heartache. Uh, he said, I know, I know my Redeemer lives. Though he slay me yet, will I trust him? Well, I just thank God today for a word of encouragement, for some for some grace, for some mercy, for the, the moving of his spirit. Oh, I thank God, hallelujah, for the Holy Ghost that teaches us and, and draws us towards Christ, our Savior. Uh, a friend of mine asked me today, he said, what is it? that you want more than anything. And I didn't hesitate. I told him, I said, I want to stand before my Savior without shame. Without shame. And I just want to live a life that's pleasing to the Lord. I mean, there's things that I want. You know, I want to go see my babies. I want to see my uh, grandchildren. I graduate. I want to see my daughter for Thanksgiving. Obviously, there's things that we want. But that one thing, you know, that I desire more than anything else, and that's to stand before my Savior without shame. You know, I'm often reminded of that verse where it says, you know, the unprofitable servant. And I never could understand that verse until... Uh, one day and the Lord just blessed me and he keeps blessing me and and I, I don't understand it I just say thank you I'm grateful to the Lord for looking out for me but it just occurred to me that of all that God has done for me and my family and in my life and looking out for me and meeting me at the crossroads of life and that providence that providence uh, there's no way I could ever repay him never Never. And I think that's what he means. We're the unprofitable servants. The amount of investment that the Lord has in our lives. Can, he, can you really say he's going to see a return? I mean, we pray, you know, that we're effective and that we're useful and that, and that souls are blessed and, 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 and that men receive Christ and come to that saving grace. You know, that's what we want more than anything. But I do, I, I pray that I would stand before him without shame. And we have to talk about sin. We have to talk about the willful rebellion. The scripture says that he that knows to do good and does it not, to him it is sin. So it's not just the things we do that are wrong that are sin. It's the things we know to do that are right that we don't do that is sin. And that's why we need grace. That's why we need mercy. That's why we have the blood of Christ that cleanses us and washes us and renews our spirit. Hallelujah. That enables us to come before the throne of grace and get the help that we need in our time of need. But if I could just read a scripture here in Corinthians chapter 3. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. Shall be revealed by fire. 
and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man work, if any man's work abide which he had built thereupon, he shall receive award. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, so as yet by fire. And another verse uh, uh, says that the heart is deceitfully wicked and no man can know it. And this is why we need the revelation of the Spirit. This is why we need the work of of the Holy Spirit in our life, the Spirit of truth, because self-deception and pride creeps up on a man. We think we're doing good. False teachers, you know, they're they're blinded. They're blinded. By definition, they're blinded. Of course, some are hirelings and, and corrupted, you know, and in for the filthy lucre, idolatry, covetousness. We know that. We understand that. But what I'm trying to say is that we can become deceived. We can deceive ourselves into thinking it's all right when it's not all right. Things, things are not what they seem always. And so we have to have that openness. We have to have that brokenness, that godly fear. And I was talking to my friend today about this very thing and not being self-deceived. When Jesus rebuked the church in Revelations in chapter 3, unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, these things say the amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because you say I'm rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. He says, Thou knowest not. In verse 18, I counsel thee to buy of me gold chide in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that thy shame and thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Having an attitude that we can be deceived. Having an attitude that we know that the devil is a liar and a deceiver and a tempter and a false accuser. And he, he has, uh, the devil's got a thousand tricks. And uh, that's why it's so important to give heed to God's Word. The revelation that's in God's Word. To, to walk in the light as He is in the light. And to listen to our brothers and stay teachable. So this is just a simple encouragement. You know, there's a lot of things that we want. But there's one appointment. There's one appointment that we all have to stand before God one day. Prepare to meet thy God. And that's the one thing. All the goodness that He's shown me. All the mercy that He's shown me, the opportunities that He's given me, the doors that He's opened for me, uh, the good godly counsel, the pastors, the godly men, the people that love me, the people that pray for me, the people that help me, you know, of all these things, I want to stand before the Lord and give an a good account, knowing that I often fail, that I don't always do the things I know that are right and good. And I need grace for these things too. And these things, I, I think, help us to remember that it's by grace that we're saved. The scripture says that it, who's, uh, whoever believes on him uh, shall not be ashamed. And it's him. He's the one that prepares our heart. He's the one that washes us and cleanses us. He's the one that prepares us and helps us. O oh, glory that breaks every chain and sets us free. He watches over us in the night. And, and, and there's many times that we could have, we took a left and thought we were lost. And if we'd have taken a right, we'd have got run over by a snowplow. Today, I went to the hospital to meet a brother coming out of the hospital. And we could have missed each other by seconds. He doesn't have his phone. But I knew he was in the hospital. And I was going in, I was going in the emergency room and he was coming out. We could have missed each other by seconds. This is the grace of God. This is the good hand of God. These are the things that help us to know and understand that it's God that's in our life. The scripture says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. 
And I couldn't understand that verse for years until I read the next verse. And God helped me, I believe. He says, for it is God that's working in you. That the, It's the Almighty God that's working in our life, in our heart, in our spirit, in our mind, and bringing us into a good order and peace and rest and trust in Him to deliver us from shame, to deliver us from failure, to roll away the burden and the guilt and help us, hallelujah, to walk uh, 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 with rejoicing, to walk with a, a song in our heart, giving thanks unto God for His goodness and His mercy. So that's my word of encouragement. Uh, prepare to meet that God. Prepare to meet that God of all the things you've got to do in this life. And that's get ready to stand before the Lord your maker and give an account for your life. Let's do it in grace. Let's do it in the mercy. Let's do it rejoicing and trusting in Him. Not just for the forgiveness of our sins, but for the grace He gives us when we often don't do the things we know we need to do that are good and right. Because He's full of mercy. He's full of grace. Doesn't mean we, we get a pass. It just means we need to know and understand that we're saved by grace through faith and that not of works, lest any man should boast. So God bless you today, the great Jehovah God, the God who sees the need and lay his hand upon you for good and blessing today and to break every curse and set you free, give you peace, give you a song in the night, oh hallelujah, and a shout in the morning. Well, God bless you. I have fun. Stay safe and give God the glory in everything.